when you've been away from your home for an extended period, say a few weeks, then you've probably noticed how things suddenly look different. It's not because you have rented to Airbnb and some kid has been swinging from the chandelier and messed with all your stuff. No, your things are exactly where you left them and you can recognize it all, but it just looks different. So you unpack, you start washing some clothes maybe, you cook some dinner and watch some TV, and after a few hours you find your home is back to normal. So I think of our brain and the way it has evolved as a city almost. So you have some very, very old parts in the core of the city, and then from there it has sort of evolved, and, and what has sort of been added around the, the old part of the city, that is newer buildings, more modern buildings, and so on and so forth. So you have something that's very old and then, you know, some newer stuff that's added on the outside. And one of the things that really is basic and very, very old in your brain, that is the survival software, as I call it. And that's the software that takes care of you in the sense that it secures that you survive. And it runs constantly. And what it's looking for is every time you look at something, it's, it's, it's dividing the world into two, friend or foe, friend or foe, friend or foe, and it runs constantly. And the only thing you can do is to, to calm down that piece of software and make it run not so dominating, I would say. And the way to do that is simply, I know it sounds very primitive, but that is to be relaxed. If you're nervous about a deadline at work, an exam you have to do or something like that, then I'm pretty sure that you will find you won't be able to see anything because you are so much in defense mode, in survival mode, that your brain is simply saying survival, friend of foe, friend of foe, and it runs all the time. So you need to calm that down and relax it. And the way to do that is simply to, to be relaxed. And there are many ways for that, I'm, I'm sure there. You know, there are tons of videos about how to do that. In, in my case, I go for a walk, but you can also, some people prefer a hot shower, some do breathing exercises, some uh, prefer to read the newspaper uh, with a good cup of tea. You know, there are many strategies for how you can get into that zone where you're relaxed. But the first thing in order to see is simply to be relaxed. Otherwise, you're not seeing anything, you're just surviving. Now you may well be thinking, Frederick, you're not a brain scientist or a psychologist. What are you rambling on about? Uh, let me just say that the one of the books I recommended in the last video by Freeman Patterson, Photography and the Art of Seeing, in one of his chapters, he is talking about attentive, relaxed attentiveness, he calls it. And he's dedicated an entire chapter just to that part. And that is, he's talking about a little bit the same as I'm saying here. He's not referring to how the brain works and, and so on, but he's basically giving you some, some, uh, some exercises to do in order to get into that zone. And I think his point is a little bit the same as what I'm saying is, if you're not in a relaxed state, there's no chance of you taking in and actually seeing things because your brain is busy doing other things that is fundamental for your survival. So read that section if you if you decide to go for that book extra carefully. I think uh, it's really an important message that he has there. Here's a bit of Danish design for you. And obviously, I hope it's obviously that it's a chair. And it was designed many years ago by a, a Danish guy called Arne Jacobsen. And also many years ago, a lady called Betty Edwards she started to teach people how to draw. And what she learned was that some of her students, all of a sudden, almost like flipping a switch, went from not being able to draw to being able to draw pretty well. And what she did with the students, just to explain, was that she, she may have put you know, a chair like this in front of them and said, could you please make a sketch, a little drawing that depicts uh, the chair here. When she then interviewed those who had suddenly become good, a drawing uh, to say what happened. They they couldn't answer her. They just said, yeah, but I just started to notice curves and lines and so on, and that, then I I could draw that. They couldn't really say that this is what happened. So Betty, she was uh, she was really really smart. She did 
a very simple thing, but also a very brilliant thing, because she took the subjects she put in front of her students. I think actually it was a drawing of Picasso, but uh, or by Picasso, but but that that doesn't really matter now. She did simply this: she took the subject, and then she turned it upside down. Because what happens when when your subject is turned upside down is that your the most basic software in your brain looks at this and says, is it friend or foe? Well, it certainly does not look dangerous, so I can relax, and then it checks out. And also your label recognition software or label adding software, whatever we should call it, the thing that classifies everything you see and says, what is this? Okay, this this is a chair, but I don't know what this is. So the 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 label that you would normally apply to a thing like this, it doesn't work. And all of a sudden, your brain or you start to see. And this is also a little bit what happens when you come home after a long vacation and look at your own home, that suddenly you start to see. Now, Betty, she calls this drawing with the right side of the brain. I think brain scientists today agree that maybe the left-right thing about your brain that your left is is the analytical and the right is the creative and and you need to have this shift in dominance so that you you, you sort of park the analytical side of your brain and then allow the creative part to be dominating it's a little bit too simplified but i think as a as a good description of what needs to happen i, th- I think uh, it it serves well uh, even though the underlying picture is probably more complicated so what you need to do is to, as I said, make sure you're relaxed so you don't have all this nervousness going on. And then you also need to not put label on things. So, of course, it could be a little bit difficult as a photographer to turn the world upside down. But start, when, you, when you're out and about walking, what do you do, street photography, whatever you do, start noticing shapes, light, colors, textures, if you have an inner dialogue where you classify what you see, try to, to notice what it is you see, not in terms of the label you would put on it, so say that's a birch tree, but instead say, okay, what textures am I seeing here? What shape am I seeing? What, how does the light and the shadows work here? And so on. So that instead of just adding a label to whatever it is you see, you actually start to see without putting a label on anything. Yeah, there you have it. I hope it made just a little bit of sense what I was trying to say here. Otherwise, please uh, hit me in the comments below. And if you have some suggestions for what you want to hear the next time next week uh, in this vlog, please let me also know in the comments because uh, right now I haven't really got a good idea. So we'll see what it will be next week. As always, happy shooting. Take care. Bye-bye.